Hey guys, in the last video we set up Redux and added the user ID to the Redux state. So now we're going to use this in our products view. So to be able to connect to the Redux store, what we're going to do is use the connect tag. And this is coming from uh, React Redux and similar to how we used it before. But now instead of adding an action, we just want to get something from the state. So the first function is no longer going to be null, and how it works is you take the state and map it to the props. So I would like this to be called, uh, for us we really only care about the user ID, so I can pass the user ID right into the props like this, and I can say state.user.userID. Um, so how do I know it was called .user? Well if we come back over to our reducer, I called it user here. So that's how I knew user there, and then dot user ID again, because I knew over here we just set the state is equal to uh, action dot user, and in our check token we passed in uh, right here the user ID. All right, so now in my props I have a user ID, and I can console log this to show you guys. So let's give it a save. Alright, so this is the user ID of that user. So now we want to show an edit and a delete button conditionally if the user ID matches the user of whoever made the product. So how do we know who made the product? Well, we can grab the seller and grab the ID for the seller. So now if I console log products, we should be able to see the seller attached to it. So notice how this guy has a seller ID of this, and you notice that might be the same as this one, right? So we know this guy uh, owns this product because he's the seller, has the same seller ID. So what we're going to do is in our render item, we're going to conditionally show some buttons. So view, so if user ID is equal to item.seller.id then we want to show these views otherwise we want to display null so inside of this view I'm going to say button and this first one is going to have a title of edit and the next one is just going to be delete alright so now we see edit and delete on all of these because we own all of them and now it wants us to uh, Go ahead and specify on clicks or on presses. For now, I'm just going to say null. Well, you know what? We can just say returns five. We'll fill these out in a future video. Okay, and I'm just going to give this a style styles dot edit delete. We'll say edit section. So this edit section I want to be horizontal. So up here, edit section, I'm going to say display flex. And flex direction I want to be uh, not column but row like this one. And uh, make sure you use this as a string and I think we're good. Now if you wanted to, you could add icons to this instead of just the word edit and delete, but I'm just going to use this because it's simpler. Alright, so cool. In the next video, we're going to be setting these up, but before we do that, I want to show you guys a quick security flaw that we have um, in our backend. So right now, uh, if we look at our resolvers, our post resolver, or not our post, our product, this guy right here. Not that one, this guy. Oh wait, no, we put this in query. I forgot we split up our queries and our mutations. Uh, inside of this, our products. So right now we're just forwarding to the database, which is fine, and because uh, we want to have the same functionality, right? But anyone can access our products right now, and we don't want that. We only want users that are logged in to be able to access and look at the products. Uh, and let me show you what I mean. So here is me requesting localhost 4000 
and I'm trying to get some products, right? And I can run this query and I get all the products back. And I'm not logged in, I don't have any headers. And just to show you guys, I can even access this from uh, Postman. So this is me just making an HTTP request to our server. I have no tokens, look at this header. No headers, not logged in, nothing. And I can access all our products. So anyone could see our products, which we don't want. Now on our client, it's you know we, we, we make you log in. But right now on our server, we're not making you log in. So let's do that. Um, and actually, before we do that too, I wanted to fix my imports because you guys showed me how I could do this with import syntax. So import as star, and now we shouldn't have a, a problem with importing it. And same with the short ID that I was doing over here. So nice. Okay. So I'm not really sure the best way to actually do this because we're using this forward to function. So I'm assuming forward to take like you know creates this. So I'm thinking I can just do some stuff before. Uh, I return it. So what I mean by that is the way I protect this endpoint, so we're going to get the parent args context and info is by running get user ID. Because remember, uh, if we take a look at this, this will throw an error if there is no token. Right? So if there's token, we do a lot of authentication, otherwise throw an error. So now, if we do this check before forwarding, and I'm just going to return forward to, and I'm not sure if I have to like pass in like parent args context info like that, or if I can just return like this. Uh, I'm going to try this first. If this doesn't work, we'll try the other method. But now we're checking this before we're just forwarding it on to the database. So now we can check authentication. So let's see, we should get an error here. And nice, we cannot read property replace of undefined. So it looks like we just need to change our thing over here. Oh, this. So we're going to say if authorization. So I'm going to say let token is equal to an empty string. And if there is authorization, then we set the token. Looks like authorization was just null. All right, all right. We don't need to look at the parameters. Let's just rerun that. And cool, now we get not authorized. And now over here, try to make a query, not authorized, perfect. But now from our app, because we have a token, we should be able to access this just fine. Let's refresh. And all right, we don't see any products, so I don't think we're having a problem, and we can see what our error is. It looks like we're just returning nothing. I don't think our problem, we didn't get the not, uh, what's it called, not authorized, right? We just, this just didn't work. So I'm gonna try calling it, passing the parent args context info, and see if that works better. And cool, it does. So we are good now, and now our products route is protected, so you have to have be logged in to access this. So we won't have any just random people accessing it. They're gonna have to log in through our app first. Perfect. So this is looking good. Um, I think there's just one other thing I wanna check before we end this video is the edit and delete button. If we log out, you know, and log in with a different user, we don't see it. So right now we don't really have a log out button on our app. So let's close all that. So in check token, I'm just going to say, I'm just going to set item and I'm going to set it to an empty string. So that what that'll do is that'll just log us out, right? Because I'm setting the token to an empty string. And now I'm going to get rid of that so we don't do that every single time. But So I'm logged out now. So my name is going to be Bob10, Bob10. Bob 10. I don't think I'm uh, ch we're checking to make sure this is a valid email so I think we're fine putting that and we're not 
So I just create an account. We could take a look. We cannot edit any of these products, but if we add our own um, product 10, pick from our camera roll. There we go. Add my product. Um, did we crash? We did crash. Can't read property. Okay, so it, it what's it called? The uh, my star thing didn't work. Did I use the wrong syntax again? So enter products. Oh yeah, import as. Huh. I fixed this, but use the wrong syntax again. All right, so now we should be able to click add product and not get an error. Unless the server's just crashed and done for, which it might be. I don't think our, okay, so our server's running. I think we just crashed on the front end when we did this, so we're gonna have to refresh it. All right, so we don't see our product. We'll create another one. V10. All right, so missing the seller ID in our update, but we do go ahead and see the edit and delete just for this one, so it's perfect. Let's fix this real quick. Um, the reason we're getting that is if we take a look at our uh, on our front end, our new product. Um, now we can't just push create product. Well, we we can, but we need to select the seller. Get the ID of that seller. And did we just, did the emulator just crash? Missing field seller. All right, it looks like my emulator just crashed. Uh, but this should go ahead and fix that error because now it's gonna grab the seller ID. The error was saying that seller ID did not exist and was expecting it. Because if we look in our products, we are now grabbing seller ID. So it expects all the ones to have the seller ID. Now I think I can just go over to Expo and rerun this. And then we can give it one last try. And then we'll be good. All right, so create a product. We don't really care. Cool, so no longer get that warning. That's it for this video guys. Sorry it dragged on a little bit, but we were just kind of fixing some errors, locked down our security of our products endpoint. So that tells you by default, all of our endpoints are not secure. And to secure them with, at least to secure them in some way, right? Um, you could add more security if you needed it, but you at least need to run this if you don't want unauthorized users to access your GraphQL endpoint. Um, so that'll get you protected right there. And then we have our nice little button showing up just on the products that we own. Uh, so that's perfect. And so now I wanna be able to edit and delete. So when we go over that, we'll actually talk about uh, permissions, right? Because I should not be able to edit or delete someone else's. Even though we don't show the button on the front end, again, we need to make sure in the back end we stop users. So we're gonna create a permission to make sure you're the only one editing your products. But that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching.